the Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin, a small SUV from Volvo that competes with the likes of Tesla Model Y, Hyundai Ioniq 5, and Kia EV6. Priced from $71,266 and available in two grades, plus or ultimate, as well as single or dual motor powertrains, the XC40 is quick, lovely to drive, and a great electric car. So hang around whilst I take you on a road trip detailing its quirks, pluses and minuses, battery performance, and whether or not you should be giving this car a try. Okay, let's kick off this review of the Volvo XC40 Recharge with space and accommodations because after all, it's an SUV, so you wanna be carrying stuff. Up front, there's a decent sized trunk that's only 31 liters. It actually looks bigger with thanks to that large bonnet and even larger plastic cover. It's perfectly fine for carrying charging cables here, which is included, unlike the Tesla Model Y. In the boot, which I might add, I really like this feature. Yeah, the kick swipes here, otherwise there's an external button as well as internal. And this is clever, not only a close button to lower the rear lift gate, but also another one that locks the entire car, meaning no need to use the fob or buttons on the door. There's this crazy thing, like a reverse version of Doctor Who, whereby it looks big, but it's actually just 540 liters, almost half that of the Model Y. Sure, in the sub boot, you have an additional 63 liters, but for what looks to be a large amount of available space, actually is reduced due to, I don't know why, like if you know, can you let me know? It's, it's, it just looks bigger, but it's, 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 it's fine. It's appropriate uh, and it works. But if we put the seats down, it increases to 1,295 liters. For those adventurers out there, you can purchase optional roof racks and put 75 kilograms on the roof. And a great feature for road trips, the small to medium sized glove box is cooled. Back here, you can actually put an optional tow pack and or tow bar rather, and you can tow about 1500 kilograms. The looks of the Volvo XC40 are bold, strong, vertical or horizontal. From the Thor headlight cluster at the front, massive brake light set to the rear, its interior vents. I like these design flares that make it an attractive car both inside and out. Available in seven options and 19 or 20 inch wheels, depending on package that you buy. The front differentiates itself from its petrol cousins with this blanked out grille. Flanked by excellent LED headlights, which also illuminate corners at lower speeds, the clamshell bonnet reminds me of the Ionic 5. The rear looks like all other XC40s, with wiper, logo, and small badge denoting its twin motors. The rear can only be described as brawny, with its high profile black top here, a little call out to its recharge as electric, and large doors that make getting into and out of the recharge quite easy. The XC40 Recharge is built upon Volvo's compact modular architecture. That means it's shared with its petrol version. So there's a cover where there used to be a stop stop button and a transmission tunnel. Now, whilst this could detract from the center seat position, your feet actually fall easily out either side so they don't feel washed in or cramped. Space in the back is excellent, especially when you think that this is actually the same base, like that, you know, modular platform, as the Polestar 2, which I reviewed up here, by the way. And yeah, it actually is quite spacious across the shoulders, especially if I've only got two people here. Knee room is excellent. Headroom is good too, considering there's actually a moon roof here. And it's, by, all the, by the way, it's got this awesome retractable sun, sunshade, as well as, you know, a fully opening uh, front portion of the window. It's really well executed and it's done with this little slider. If you're thinking about carrying three passengers across the back here, you could, but I think it's gonna be a little squashy and fine for kids, but three adults, maybe not so much, just yeah, short journeys. You get two outboard ISOFIX points, rear map pockets, two USB sockets hiding behind this flap, vents, pull down center armrest that also doubles as water bottle spot, but in the rear doors is small bottles only or nothing. And comment down below, wrong answers only. What on earth is this? Like, is it a crumb catcher? Uh, it's really a bit of wasted space and I fear it's gonna be a right raw pain in there. You know what to clean. The entire cabin of the Volvo XC40 is dark, moody and sophisticated. This color is called charcoal and I like its contemporary feel with mixtures of blacks, dark grays, soft touch materials and silver highlights. 
The front seats look like leather, feel like leather, but a Microtech vinyl. They're supportive, bolted nicely, and they're excellent because oh, there's 10 way adjustment, including four way lumbar support and under thigh extension. They're both heated, back seats too, plus this lovely steering wheel that also gets three levels of heat available to it. I'll talk more about steering and the controls on it later on in the review, but I like it's sort of, well, it's not too chunky, it's not too small, it's kind of just right. And it's again got that either vinyl or leather wrap. It's tilt and height adjustable and has one of two settings for either firm or SUV like driving experience. On the driver's door, you've got your usual controls for windows, mirror adjustments, electronic child locks, seat memory positions, and your first call out to its awesome Harman Kardon 13 speaker system that produces clean, crisp sound that fills the cabin very nicely. Controlling most of the car functions is this nine inch center display with Android Automotive, DAB radio, and wired Apple CarPlay. I reviewed this system in the Polestar 2, link up here. It's fast, does everything you could want in a car like Google Assistant, Maps, and some apps from the Google Play Store. And yes, there's also a Volvo car app for remote services with four years of data included. Think Tesla Premium, but at not $10 a month. Beneath that, you've got some hard buttons for things like audio controls, play, pause, and volume, hazards, and that's it. It's a bit wasted as you've got these two spots here that seemingly do nothing. Below that, there's an inductive charging bay for your smartphone, NFC, two more USB sockets, making four inside the cabin, then your drive selector, park brake, two good sized water bottle holders, a funky dual cubby spot, this one for your glasses case, and maybe this one for your tissue box. This interior, like its sister brand Polestar, is absolutely lovely. Like all touch spots are very nice. It's well thought out and the Android Automotive OS is as close to Tesla with its features and user interface. I'd still like more granular controls for perhaps the audio to be on the bottom portion of the screen and this is feedback for uh, Google by the way. And the controls down beneath that, that should actually be for the climber. Torque in the single motor variety is 330 newton meters, which is pretty punchy. And in this one, it's very punchy and really surprising. And it comes in at 660. The suspension up front, we've got McPherson struts, and across all of them, we've got uh, coils, independent uh, air, and uh, yeah, it actually handles very nicely. I need to make mention that there's actually an off road mode in this car, but Honestly, would I do that? I don't think so. But if I were to, what it does is it actually assesses below 40 k's per hour um, what each wheel is doing, and it will then try to give more power to the wheel that it believes has got more you know, grip and try to stop the other one from spinning by breaking it. Yeah, it's, it's, it I guess that's clever. That's great if, if you're sort of getting out there and going off road with this vehicle. But I don't know, would you? Not too sure about that. The steering is uh, nicely uh, weighted, centered, and my position and my view is great. I can see really well out the front, to the sides, and out to the back. Turning circle in the Volvo XC40 is 11.8 meters, which is actually better than the Ionic 5 and the Tesla Model Y, but the Kia EV6 and well, others are actually smaller. Noise levels in the car are pretty good. Um, I would say it's really comparable to the Tesla Model Y. I've done some measurements and here they are on screen for your reference. And it's got no laminate glass in here like the Tesla Model Y and what other cars seem to be doing now, especially in this premium segment. So I think it could definitely be improved um, if one, they did that glass and or they maybe changed out of these 20 inch uh, sporty rims to something that's a bit more accommodating and nicer on our Australian roads. In terms of safety, you've got collision mitigation support, front blind spot information system, cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist, and electronic brake assistance. It's five star and cap rated and features five year unlimited kilometer warranty, eight years free roadside assist, and a really good 30,000 kilometers or every two year service interval with this car, uh, which is actually probably one of the better ones out there. 
You can do a service program that includes vehicle safety, air filter and tyre sealant checks. For those who are wondering by the way about the sunroof or the moonroof rather, um, it's well insulated, it's tinted and today is currently, where is it, it's uh, 31 degrees right now and it doesn't feel well any different to like a normal roof. So just to reassure you that moon roofs, they're awesome, they look really great. Now, front and center in front of me is a binnacle, and I love it. It's just so Tesla Model S and X, and well, almost all other car makers out there, which, you know, in my Tesla Model Y, I really do <laughs> dislike the big screen in the center. I love what it does, don't get me wrong, but having to look over to the side, to the left, just to check my speed is, is not the best experience. Um, so just talking you through it, you've got your speedo to your left, you've got your drive select to your right, so in this case we're in drive, you've got neutral and reverse obviously. I've got one pedal driving turned on right now, and then it's option, right? You have to turn it on and it's, it stays, it sticks with your uh, profile. And uh, what that means for those who don't know is that when you um, want to slow the car down, you just take your foot off the accelerator and the car will slow down to a complete stop. And at the very end, it's going to not only take that motor and uh, pull the car to stop, but it's going to blend in brakes for this smooth, seamless experience for the car not to move. It's done very nicely, it's nice and grippy, and I think, well, thanks to those like, uh, well, what is it, 300 kilowatts of power? Yeah, there's, plen there's plenty of um, capacity in those electric motors to bring this car to a stop pretty fast. Uh, in a moment, I will do that acceleration test. I hang around, we're almost there. Um, in the center here, uh, it's um, got a map display and uh, it's lovely. So I I've done now two big road trips in this car and I have on the center screen that overview you know that Google does, like you know you've got three different views, you can have north up, you can have um, forward facing, or you can have overview, and I never understood people who did overview, but it, it makes sense when you've got two screens, so this one in front of me is like 10.1 inch, it's high resolution, it's nice and clear, and so on my uh, map on the centre here, I can see along the journey about how it's going, whereas right in front of me, I can see the, the nitty gritty as to, oh okay, your um, the next turn is going to be here, and you're going to follow the road there. You, you know, it gives you an idea as to where you're actually going. So up the top there, there are some cameras, and it's doing uh, speed side recognition. So you can see here, it's got like 80 k's per hour zone, and that was a nasty pothole in good old Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, where we've got the best roads. And then you've got your actual speed that we're doing, and I'm just keeping it down to you know, nice, reasonable speed here. It's nice country back road and I'm not um, slowing anybody down and uh, it's it's got everything that we need we can see how much range we've got uh, remaining the percentage of the battery so I'm getting a little nervous because I need to take this car back to Volvo today and um, I've, it's more than 37 kilometers so I will be doing a rapid charge on the way back and um, I'll talk about uh, charging and stuff in a moment but nonetheless um, everything is here it's, um, if I engage uh, radar cruise control, for instance, um, you can see that there's a symbol at the bottom uh, denoting that, okay, I'm going to be doing lane keep assist for you. So um, away you go, just, you know, um, keep your hands on the wheel, be ready to take over at any time. And it's, it's okay. It's um, weirdly not as good as the Polestar 2. Um, and uh, particularly with uh, stop-start traffic, it comes up short and that will creep into the car in front of it. Uh, yeah, there's a few other uh, things there. So again, I'd just like to point to that video that I've done. It's only like about a five minute video and it's a good comparison between um, the Volvo XC40 and the Tesla Model Y and Autopilot. You can see the difference as to how much the wheel can turn the, um, around corners and things like that. But nonetheless, the binnacle is beautiful. Um, and that's controlled through the left hand side of the steering wheel here. So you've got resume or, or speed up, um, does 5k per hour increments, or you press and hold it, does 1k per hour increments. Uh, the negative button actually um, decreases again by 5 or 1k increments. Follow distance, um, which, uh, yeah, watch that video for a critique on the follow distance issue I have. 
and on the other side you've got your um, navigation buttons for not only your menus but also let's say any media might be playing so forward backwards on your track um, press the button in for um, your voice assistant um, change the uh, screen that you see so if I press the um, this button here it takes away that center display which why would you <laughs> why would you and to the very far right uh, you can see the amount of regen it's actually capturing back into the battery there um, it's all very nicely laid out and um, I, I do really enjoy this uh, cluster like it's actually slightly bigger than the Polestar 2 version and everything just seems to have the right place and I found it very intuitive and again a great system all right we're about to uh, jump into a freeway so I can do a 100k per hour test and uh, let's do the magic of Final Cut Pro and see how it goes. Whoa, it's a good start. It's a good day for it. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. It's a good thing it's a 110k per hour zone because mate, we got there damn fast. Woo. It moved the camera. <laughs> 0 to 100 k's in 4.9 seconds and I, what, I, what did I just do? I think I did faster than that, definitely felt faster. Had all the grip of the world there, it was great, good tyres. I can't recall what the um, single motor speed to 100 is and I'll put that on screen. But nonetheless, it's definitely got a lot of punch, it takes a lot of people by surprise. And oh my gosh, it's fun. You can see the smile on my face, right? It's, um, it's, a, it's a lovely, lovely car. All right. Let's finish this off with charging, supercharging, and all that sort of stuff, and we'll wrap it up. The Volvo XC40 Recharge comes in two varieties, either single or dual motor, and both get the same battery pack, and that's a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, but usable, only 75. It only gets about 400 to 418 kilometers of rated range, and my result, 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers after more than a week of driving, 800 clicks, highway, freeway, urban, you name it. And uh, so that's gonna mean, realistically, about 350 kilometers of real world range. That is to say, you fill your car up to 100% and you take it all the way down to zero. Not that you actually use a battery electric car this way. No, you typically just charge it every single night. So any range that you lose across the day, you replace within a few hours at night time. The car actually comes bundled with an included charger and that's a typical 10 amp thing so just think maybe I'm going to give you about 10 kilometers of range per hour or you can install a three phase 11 kilowatt fast charger at home and get about ooh, 75 80 kilometers of additional range per hour. You can go to a fast charger like I did here and it's rated at 150 kilowatts and magic it actually gets 150 kilowatts kind of surprising that some car makers they'll claim that they can go a lot faster with charging say think Ionic 5 uh, Kia EV6 whereas this one actually says 150 kilowatts and actually gets 150 kilowatts so yeah all respectable numbers very usable range and decent charging speeds it gets a tick for me the Volvo XC40 is sophisticated, well-featured, superbly built and a great premium offering for buyers in Australia. From its assured looks, spacious interior, excellent handling and crazy fast performance, it will surprise many at the traffic lights. There's very little to critique Volvo. I'd like to see improvements in efficiency as during my week of the car, it averaged around 21.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, meaning only about 355 kilometers of range. At a price that's very competitive with Volvo's petrol offerings, I would recommend to anyone in the market at this price point to give it a go, as it's a great car and worthy of your consideration. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me an absolute thumbs up, write me a comment, or better yet, subscribe, because all these things absolutely help this channel grow. If you want to take your support to the next level, maybe think about either Patreon or YouTube membership, where you get behind the scenes, news, polls, and stuff you just don't get here on normal, everyday, free YouTube. And if you're in Sydney in March next year, I'll be up there at Fully Charged Live Australia. It's going to be a great event, held over March 10 to 11, and uh, details are below. Get your tickets and yeah, I'd like to see you there. Otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be great.